Hello, this is William from Visual Components. In this video, I'm going to show you how to model a distance joint using physics. To get started, let's go to the Modeling tab, create a new component, add a box or block feature, and let's go to the Feature Properties panel and change the block's length to be 1000, and its width to be 1000, and add a box collider. And Now if I zoom in and run the simulation, Physics is turned on in the 3D world, and with my mouse I can apply a pushing force, so notice I can move this big block around. Let's now reset and create a new link or node in the component, and offset it from the component's origin here. So let's move along the x-axis, so I will drag this red arrow here, and use these tick marks to increment the value to 1500. So now the node offset is here, and if I now add a new box or block feature, notice that, that block inherits the node's offset. Let's now set the length of the block to be 500, and its width to be 500, and give it a box collider. So notice we can kind of tell these two objects apart, so this is the big block, this is a small block. And now if I go to the component graph panel, you can see that the root node has a physics entity behavior for this big block, and the link1 node has a physics entity behavior for the smaller block, but in the properties panel you can see its physics type right now is kinematics, so let's change that to be in physics. And when I run the simulation, notice I can move around the big block and I can move around the small block. So what we want to do, we want to attach these two blocks together using a physics joint. And instead of having the distance between them remain constant, let's actually create a distance. So when I push or pull this small block here, once it reaches a certain distance, it starts pulling this big block. But if it doesn't reach that limit, you know, they just kind of stay put. Let's reset, go to the behavior group and click the behavior zero. And under Physics, click Joint. So this adds a new Physics joint. And now we need to attach that joint. So right now this behavior is in Link 1, so we want to attach it to the root node. So what we did here is we attached this small block, its node, to this node here. And now for the constraints, let's actually lock them. And what we just did is this is now a fixed joint. So if I run the simulation, if I move the big block, notice the small block moves with it, and that distance between them remains constant. And the same for the smaller block. So this is a fixed joint, but now we want a distance joint. So when I start moving this smaller block here, once it reaches a certain limit, it will then start moving the big block. So let's reset. And now let's give a limit along the x-axis. So for the constraints, let's set x-axis to be free and see what that looks like. So now, if I move this small block, you can see the big block is not moving with it, so it's kind of free to move in that x-axis like so. But this is kind of all over the place, so we probably want some limit to where they start pulling one another or pushing one another. So let's reset. And this time, let's set the constraints of the x-axis to be limited. And notice I have another section here of options, so I can set a limit value. What this means is that once the distance reaches that limit, you know, it starts pushing or pulling the other attached node. So let's say it's 200 millimeters. And if I run the simulation, let's now start moving this small block here. You can see the big block's not quite moving, but now it's pulling it. So now if I move it closer, it should reach that limit and start pushing it. And yep, there you go. So that's an example of a distance joint. You can pull and you can push once you reach a certain distance. So they don't have a fixed distance, they just have a tolerance level or a limit. Let's reset. And instead of using a limit value of 200, let's use 50. And then select this checkbox here for soft. So let's create some springiness. So let's say we have a spring constant of 500 and a dampening of 20. And let's see what this looks like. So if I run the simulation, you can see it kind of moves back, it springs back. And the same with pushing against each other. So it kind of boop, pops back that way. Now this might look a bit confusing. So let's go and create a physics cable to kind of show the relationship between these two objects and that springiness. So let's reset. And now, let's go to the behavior group, click the behavior zero, and under physics, click cable. So this adds a physics cable, and how this works is that the cable will have a start point and an end point, which you have to pin to locations. So if I go to the component graph panel, here's pin one, so select it, and you can see there's its location. Let's now go to the tools group and click snap, and let's snap the start of the cable, or that pin, to this location here, so along this face of the big block. There we go.
Now do the same for the end of the cable here. Let's snap it to this edge or this face here. So in the component graph panel, select pin 2, then use that snap command, and I'll snap it right there. There we go. But we're not done yet. Let's go back to our component graph panel, select the physics cable behavior, and we have a location for the start and end of the cable, but we now have to attach it to the nodes. So for node 1 in the properties panel, that's going to be the root node, and for node 2, that's going to be link 1. Now right now the end types for the cable are free so they can kind of move wherever they want to. They are anchored to these locations, which you can see here, but if we're on the simulation, notice they just you know fall down to the floor. So we want to lock those anchor points in place. So for the end type, let's set them to be fixed. Now if we run the simulation, you can see that the anchor points of the cable here it remains fixed, and the same over here, and there is a bit of force of gravity pushing down on the cable in the end point, the middle point here. So now Let's take this big block, and yeah, there we go. So now you can see this distance joint, the relationship between the big block and that smaller block, and the elasticity or the springiness of that relationship using that physics cable. Now one thing I want to mention about the spring is that sometimes you need to change its stiffness and the iterations of the spring, how it's generated when you push and pull. So let's reset, and this time I'll set the stiffness of the spring to be high, so it's quite rigid. And for its collider length, let's actually change that to be 50. And that was the, if you remember, the limit for this distance joint I set up between these two objects. So if I now run this simulation, do it again, it's going a bit more smoother. There we go. So the spring is a bit more stiff, and the collider length kind of matches up with the distance tolerance I set up for that distance joint. There we go. All right, this concludes the video. If you have any more questions, please feel free to visit our forum at forum.visualcomponents.com. And as always, have a wonderful day.